Hi, everyone. This is your host, Greg Myers. And this episode is the final entry in our special series on the digital payments tipping point. In this three-part series, I've been talking with executives from WEX Corporate Payments Division who partnered with the research team at The Economist over the summer of 2020 to look into the state of business-to-business payments in financial services, fintechs, and technology companies. The research found that companies that have grown most robustly during the pandemic are accelerating their evolution away from slow, manual, paper-based payments into secure, data-rich, real-time digital payments. This three-part series digs into the issues surrounding this rapid evolution in digital payments. Our first episode featured Greg Sassone, SVP of Business and Partner Growth at Wex Corporate Payments, and focused on whether banks should build, buy, or partner when it comes to adopting new technology or innovation. The second episode featured Dylan Jones, Vice President of Operations for Wex Corporate Payments, and Laura Shen, Director of Strategy for Wex Corporate Payments. This discussion focused on the interchange realities that the payments industry needs to face. My special guest on this final episode in the series is WEX Corporate Payments President Jay Dearborn. Jay and I will be discussing the shape of payments to come and what might lie ahead beyond the digital tipping point. WEX is a global B2B payments technology company. Their corporate payments division focuses on innovating digital payment solutions for financial institutions and fintechs, as well as large corporations that need to modernize their AP processes. We've got a great episode today, so let's get started. Hi, Jay, and welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast, and specifically this special series, The Digital Payments Tipping Point. Today, Jay Dearborn and I will be talking about the value beyond the tipping point, unlocking even more value with digital payments. So, Jay, thank you for being here, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Greg. Absolutely. So, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role at WEX? Maybe I start with WEX real quickly and then put my introduction in that explanation. So WEX is a global B2B payments company. We operate in four different verticals. We have a fleet business, a health business, a travel business, and a corporate payments business. I am the president of the corporate payments business. I've been at WEX for just a little over five years. I actually joined as the head of strategy. Prior to WEX, I was at American Express and was a partner at McKinsey & Company. Okay. So first question, thanks to the pandemic, there's been a strong momentum towards digital payments. I mean, that's been written about and talked about, but I think it's especially important when we start talking about in B2B organizations. So why do you think this momentum will continue in 2021? We, in partnership with The Economist, just ran a survey on the state of digital payments. It was very clear in that survey that we've reached a tipping point in regards to digital payments. And there were two salient points that really popped out of the survey. The first was those that had invested in the digitization of their payments flows were really thriving through this pandemic. And probably even more important was the second point, which is those that had yet to invest in digital payments now had become conscious of the need to invest in digital payments. You put these two together and you realize that the digitization of payments is at a tipping point right now. And it's all due to the fact that the customer itself needs to have these payments electronically made in order to facilitate the business that that they do. Yeah, absolutely. We talk about digital payments in the B2B space. And, you know, one of the topics that comes up is attaching data to the payments. Can you talk about what that means and why that's an important shift? Yeah. And maybe I'll take the counterpoint here, which is I don't think it's an important shift. You know, if we think about B2B payments, data attached to that payment has always been the case. It's just that it's usually been done by a human. And, you know, if you think about a B2B payment versus a, consumer payment. A consumer payment was built on this idea of a consumer walking into some sort of space and presenting a payment instrument. And there's no need for data because the person is interacting with another person to take a card or a check or what have you. B2B payments have always been done not in person. There's always been this concept of readmit advice. When we think about digital payments now, how do we get computers to take the burden off AP and AR clerks 
It's about how do we take and distribute the payment, but then attach data to it, which had typically been put in some sort of remit advice so that we can tie out everything on the back end, ensure that the cash is applied correctly, that the invoice has been paid and satisfied. Again, I don't think that anything has changed. The B2B payments are still B2B payments. We need to have remit advice. I think what has changed is getting computers to stand in the middle here and be able to handshake not only the payment, but the data that associates with that payment across all the different industries where that payment needs to be applied. Okay. And so when we talk about these digital payments, I mean, we're really talking about replacing checks mostly, right? Well, here in the United States, we are. So I started my career at American Express more than 20 years ago. And we were talking about killing the check at Amex. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we've, we've made some progress, but still, you know, all of the research that if you look at it in 2019 and 2020, you still look at the preponderance of B2B payments in the United States is still check. And, and by preponderance, I mean more than 50% is still check. Yeah, that's amazing. You and many other executives there at WEX have talked about bridging the accounts payable and accounts receivable gap. And, you know, that's a major trend for 2021 and beyond, obviously. So how did we get into this sort of Tower of Babel situation within B2B payments and and how will WEX help us get out of that? And I assume, Greg, by the Tower of Babel situation is the many different languages here trying to talk to one another. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's an interesting analogy. Look, you know, going back to my prior answer, I don't think anything's changed in B2B payments. What we have happening is as we move towards the digitization of accounts payable and accounts receivable, we have innovation going on. Innovation going on in many different pockets. It could be innovation around the payment type, which is lowering the cost per payment, or it could be innovation around a particular industry. You know, for instance, the construction industry or the media industry or the insurance industry, where you have technology firms that are focused on unlocking value in the payment and really modernizing and streamlining flows. Now, what we do at WEX is facilitate this B2B payment. And what we focus on is connecting our platform, and and we wholly own our technology as well as our own captive bank, We try to connect that to as many payer systems and payee systems as possible. What we see is a world here where there should be the universal translator to go back to your Tower of Babel's illusion. There should be a universal translator that navigates all of the different players on either the buyer or the seller side such that we can pass that payment. We can pass it with the data. We can pass it with extremely high reliability and help modernize, digitize, and streamline the workflow around getting payments applied and reconciled. Yeah. And do you think part of the challenge was for many years, companies have been focused on one side of the equation or the other, and now maybe it's come to the realization that those two aren't separate organizations. AP and AR work in the same company. They need to be having that conversation, whether that's using technology or not. Yeah, it's an interesting point. If I think about the accounts receivable function, the accounts receivable function depends on the industry that you're in and how your company is set up. It's how do you get paid? How do you receive payment? And that, that tends to be quite bespoke. The accounts payable function you know, is an offshoot of your procurement department. It's how do you pay all of these different invoices? It's less bespoke. There are companies and ecosystems in fintechs, in innovators that have been focused on either side of this equation. And I think we are where we are in part because of that. But also, I don't know if there's anything the matter with where we are, where we are. We had to leave land, you know, to build the bridge from somewhere. And it just so happened we had to leave land on either side of this equation. And we're moving and building that bridge towards the center. So let's pivot a little bit and talk about banks. How should banks be participating in digital payments and should they market their innovations as white labeled or branded? And is that dependent upon who their partners are? Yep, it's a good question, Greg. You can't have a conversation around B2B payments without taking into consideration the entire you know, financial institution industry upon which global commerce is built today and will continue to be built tomorrow. 
when I'm thinking about banks, I you know there are a couple of quotes that come to mind. I, I think about Bill Gates, who says banking is necessary and banks are not. And I think there's a piece of real truth about that, which is the services which the banks render are absolutely critical, although the banks in their current incarnation may not be necessary. And, you know, to bring that to life, if we think about the world's top banker, Jamie Dimon, do a quick Google search on how he's thinking about fintechs and the threat that they pose. I think about banks and I think about the entitlement that they have over their corporate customers, their corporate customers, their medium, mid-market customers, their small market customers. I think about big banks, global banks. I think about mid-cap banks. I think about small banks. They all have entitlement over a corporation. They hold the line of credit. They hold the assets. And by entitlement, I mean they have the privileged relationship by which to serve that customer on their payments needs. Now, what banks don't do very well, whether they're large or small, is innovate. And it seems absolutely paramount to me that banks have to partner with financial technology companies in order to provide services to their customers that they're entitled to present to those customers. Otherwise, they can't do it. I think about our own business at Wex, and you know, we're out in the marketplace working with many corporates directly. There actually is a very large part of the business that I manage where we white label our software because we wholly own it. And we figured that not only should we attack the market in a direct channel, but we should attack it through a partner channel. So we work with the likes of American Express, PNC, Commerce, US Bank, Synovus Regions, All of these great banks that have these unbelievable customer bases, we help arm them with white-labeled solutions that serve their corporate client needs, whether that be plastics or virtual or P-card or T&E card or what have you. Okay. Do you also work with smaller banks and regional banks or smaller and, and credit unions? So right now we don't, and it's a place that we've been looking to potentially expand. I think the challenge for us at Wax is... In our size company, you know, in our corporate payments team is about 400 strong. To have relationships with smaller banks really would require us to scale our front end significantly. I think about how do we attack, you know, that smaller end of the marketplace through partners, partners that are providing technology to credit unions or small main street banks. Okay. At the turn of the year, we heard many commentators say that based on breakthroughs like the mRNA vaccines for COVID, advances in AI language generation, Apple's new M1 system on a chip, and electric cars all starting to scale, that we're at the beginning of a second roaring 20s. Do you agree? And if so, what is payments contribution to this new era of prosperity? Maybe a couple of thoughts on that bit based on my worldview. I I like to think of myself as a pragmatic optimist. Let me start with the optimism part. If you look at all of the productivity measures coming out of the global economy, productivity should be enhancing throughout the 2020s. You, You would think that that productivity then leads to macroeconomic success. I think you have to balance that with the valuations that you see today, the search for yield that has driven what would be considered irrational exuberance by pretty much any measure, at least historical measure. You know, do I believe that there's a roaring 20s coming? Yeah, absolutely. I think it may be a little bit rough and choppy you know, for us to get there. In the payments industry, in the industry in which we compete, what I get really excited about is harkening back to this 20 years ago at American Express, and we were trying to kill the check then. I think the 2020s, you're going to kill the check here in the United States. The rest of the world has already done it. When we kill it, because this chapter in our own evolution has come so late, I think we'll end up leapfrogging and getting a bunch of other benefits in our payments ecosystem. Because when we solve the check problem, we're not just solving the payment. We actually will be solving the payment plus the data, plus getting it all connected via APIs, get it automated such that payments really become ubiquitous in the B2B space like like they should be. Are there other trends that you see beyond the replacing of checks sort of in your space that you think will also contribute to this? Look, I think the work of an AP or an AR clerk looks more like exception management. If we think about this non-routine cognitive labor that does this type of work, that's really what it should be focused on is exception management rather than punching in keys and 
you know, something that's quite prone to human error. You know, the computers, when this is all stitched together, the computers in the background will be able to automate a payments file being sent out and ensure that all of those payments get posted to the suppliers and the suppliers can filter back information that says, yep, received it, it's been applied to the correct account. And then really only when there is trouble in that flow, you have an AP or an AR clerk intervening. I think that's what Zen looks like here. And we'll, we'll steadily march that way throughout the 2020s. It's interesting. I've read a little bit about questioning what's going to happen when people return to the office. I kind of ask this question a lot because it's interesting. Like, you know, the pace of innovation and payments is huge right now, right? It's really, you know, moving fast. The pandemic has driven it, whether it's B2B payments or, or B2C. And you've got all these people who are now working at home. It's harder to write a check and get it approved by three people at home. Right. So it's driven some innovation in that area and some acceleration of that innovation. But what happens when everyone goes back to the office? Like, how far does the pendulum swing back to the way it was before? I just don't think it does, Greg. Here's the thing about innovation innovation doesn't slow down categorically. We don't have like a spike of innovation and then we go into the dark ages. <laughs> that happened once and it's in all of our history books. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, Everyone's doing the review process this time of year. And I went through the reviews with all of my direct reports. And there's a piece of feedback I gave every single direct report, which is, we got to move quicker. And that's not just because I wanted to tell them that in their WEX context. I think it's universal advice for everyone listening to this. The 2020s are going to be fast. You can count on it you know, being faster than this past decade. When we go back to the office... We're going to go back probably in some sort of hybrid fashion. And you know what? I may go back five days a week in person, but maybe there are others that are going to go back four days a week in person. And this concept of being able to work where you are, independent of where you are, I think we can be pretty sure of is going to be a global accepted norm that we probably were already you know, heading in that direction pre-COVID, but post-COVID, you know, it accelerated, you know, our move in that direction. And I don't think that there's going to be any sort of um, retrenchment back into some sort of workplace of old. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. Well, this next question is sort of a two-part question. So we're about a year out from the first COVID cases hitting here in the U.S. and in Western Europe. What do you think are some of the lessons learned from this in the payment industry? And then the second part is, what are the priorities for you as you head into 2021 at WEX? Put the rearview mirror on here for a moment and think about where we've been over the last now 11 months at least here in the Americas. There are two thoughts that come to mind. One would be the innovations that we were all working on prior to COVID still existed in COVID. I, on behalf of the industry, I think we should take great comfort knowing that the digitization of payments, the tools and the techniques and the thoughts that we had in regards to B2B were all the right thoughts. We had this great accelerator for those innovations being put into the marketplace. You know, the other thought I have, though, if I look in retrospect, and I think of particularly of Q2 last year, where this concept of a global pandemic, which the world hasn't had for 100 years, the capital markets seized. There was a period of time in Q2 where I think you know, the world collectively was on lockdown and all businesses, whether they be payments businesses or not, were on lockdown. In retrospect, what I wish we had all collectively done was just keep our eye on the horizon and perhaps you know, focus a bit more through that period of time. And we would have been able to, to create even more you know, success for our companies in terms of weathering the storm. What's amazing in retrospect is just how resilient you know, our world is. I think we should all probably take solace in that when one of these types of moments come up sometime in our inevitable future. I think about what are we focused on at WEX in 2021? Well, it looks a lot like what we're focused on in 2020. At WEX, we wholly own our tech stack. And for us, we are constantly thinking about how do we tie together all the different pieces of that tech stack? How do we add new payment types? How do we make the data richer? How do we connect to more payers? How do we connect to more payees in the systems that each of those parties use in order to bridge this APAR divide? 
We also are bankers, right? So we have a wholly owned industrial bank. We underwrite all of our own transactions. We issue our own transactions. We're focused on during this period of time where there are winners and losers in the economy. And credit health is both volatile and it's varied throughout the economy. We're quite focused with our banker hats on, on how do we enable payments to happen and using credit facilities and how do we use credit and extend that, you know, on our own behalf. You know, the final thing that I think about is how do we at Wex take even more advantage of this macro trend of digitization of payments? And I think about the customers that we have and the prospects that we have in our pipeline. How do we get more banks to white label our product? How do we have more fintechs, you know, accessing our embedded payments via API and creating their own front ends, however they wish? And then I think about our own direct business, working with mid-market and large market corporates. You know, how do we bring more of them into this WEX family? Great. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Jay, we've covered a lot of ground today. So I wanted to thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate your insights. And again, thanks for your time. Yep. Thank you, Greg. And to all you listeners out there, I thank you for your time as well. And for more information about how to reach Jay and links to the Digital Payments Tipping Point Research Study and Landing page, please visit our show notes. And as I previously mentioned, this is the final episode in our special series about the Digital Payments Tipping Point sponsored by WEX. All three episodes can be found on our website, www.leadersandpayments.com.